I'm dying and I'm having fun. And I'm going to keep having fun every day I have left because there's no other way to play it. Boy, I remember that. That is from Professor Randy Pausch's famous last lecture. He was open and upfront in his final days, sharing the life lessons that he's learned from dying. It inspired millions of people. Now, a study in the New England Journal of Medicine says the entire health care system would benefit if all of us could be more honest. Dr. Thomas Smith of Johns Hopkins University is a leading expert on health care for the dying, and he wrote a commentary published along with the study. Good morning, doctor. Oh, thank you. Thank you for allowing so, me to be here. Let's talk about the study. It reveals some misconceptions about life-threatening illnesses. What are they? Well, these researchers interviewed almost 1,200 patients who had colorectal cancer or lung cancer, which could not be cured. And almost three-quarters of the patients thought that a person like themselves could actually be cured of their disease when essentially none of them will be. That's a major change in what we would expect people to, to think. So how do you need to improve the communication then with those people facing these life-threatening illnesses? Well, you can start when you're well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you're faced with a life-threatening illness, don't be afraid to get information. People who plan, people who make their choices known so that we as healthcare professionals can follow their choices do a lot better. Their families do better. In fact, in one study where patients got palliative care alongside their usual cancer care, mm -hmm. palliative care is open and honest communication, medically appropriate goal setting, careful attention to symptoms. Mm -hmm. People had less depression, less anxiety, and actually lived longer. It's such a difficult conversation to have, though, I think, doctor. How do you sit down and tell someone and keep it positive that you're really not going to live much longer? How do you do that? Well, the first thing is to ask permission. We do ask, tell, ask. Mm -hmm. What, what is that it that mean? you want to know about your illness? And 90% of patients will look me in the eye and say, tell me everything, doc. Mm -hmm. I really need to know so that I can plan. A few won't then tell people in very understandable terms. None of us know exactly when someone's going to die, but we can say, you really have weeks or months based on people like you. But everybody feels, I could be the one that beats it. Exactly. I have a positive attitude. I have, you know, I have faith. What do you say to those people? I say, that's wonderful, yeah. and we promise not to stand in the way of any miracles. Okay. But we can hope for the best, but we still need to plan for the worst. And and doctor, one of the important things I think about this conversation is how much of our medical dollars are being spent at the very end of life. What is that figure? I know when I've been told it before, it sort of really necessitates that people be responsible, including doctors, about end of life decisions, right? Yes, it is. About 25% of Medicare dollars are spent in the last year of life and about 9% of, of Medicare dollars are spent in the last month of life. This really isn't about saving money so much as honoring people's choices. Mm -hmm. We have to know what people's choices are by having these difficult conversations so that we know what people want. Mm -hmm. Most people really want to focus on being at home. Yes. They don't want to be in the hospital. Yes. So if you can be at home, have relief of surrounded pain, relief of symptoms, love. surrounded yes. by the people you love, yeah. mm -hmm. not only is it honoring people's choices, it's going to save the healthcare system money. Difficult but important conversation to have. Thank you, Dr. Smith. You're welcome. Good to see you.